Hi, uh, I'm Colette Dollarhide. Um, I wish I could be there in person, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from being able to travel at this time. So um, I've been asked to provide some information about comprehensive school counseling programs through this videotape venue. Um, it's all unscripted. Um, it's all, as you can see, not professionally done, but I'm hoping that um, it will give me an opportunity to share some thoughts with you in an appropriate um, manner. I realize this is also being translated, uh, so I will try to speak slowly and clearly. Um, I did want to first say a few words of thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the Conference Planning Committee for the invitation to come and be a part of these important discussions as you are working on your own school counseling program there in Indonesia. I want to also thank Dr. Nicole Bowen and Dr. James Moore III, um, both of whom invited me to be a part of these proceedings. Um, and um, they are valued colleagues and dear friends, and I, I wish I could be there. Um, in addition, I'd like to thank Dr. Sybil Cato, who uh, was willing to, um, to set aside some of her commitments and willing to come and uh, share her professional experiences with you and her expertise with you. Um, so I wanted to thank her for, for her willingness to step in. Um, finally, I wanted to thank the 12 wonderful Indonesian scholars who I've had the honor of working with at Ohio State. Uh, they've been a part of a program, um, some it's a faculty renewal program, for others it's been a sandwich program for, for um, new doctoral or uh, doctoral candidates who are between, who have completed their doctoral coursework and are beginning their doctoral dissertations. Uh, they come to Ohio State, uh, and in that capacity, I've had the opportunity to work with them as they've uh, refined um, their, uh, their dissertation proposals, helping them locate research, et cetera. But in all instances, um, I have just been delighted to be a part of their learning process. I think they've taught me more than I've been able to teach them because they've shared with me the beauty of your culture, uh, the beauty of the country, uh, the generosity of spirit that exists in Indonesia, um, as well as the unique challenges that face all of you as, as you're talking about developing a national model or a model for school counseling and school guidance there in Indonesia. Um, again, I wish I could be there to take part in them personally. Um, because this these discussions about comprehensive school counseling programs uh, are so important. Um, I had wanted to um, start off with just some, some general comments about, um, about the work that I, I imagine that you are engaging in. Um, as you are thinking about what qualities you want in your school counseling programs, um, I applaud the fact that you're looking at existing models and looking at what exists out there and deciding from those various models what, what form and shape your national model might take. Um, I recognize that it is uh, critical that the, um, the, the shape and the tone and the, the um, context, if you will, of your model needs to be unique, uniquely situated for the Indonesian culture. Um, I hope, though, that, that in all of those discussions, there will be uh, six sort of overarching qualities that you will look to build into the model that you're, that you're uh, putting together. These six qualities of comprehensive school counseling programs are based on research, and uh, research here in the States um, gives us some insight into the, the qualities and the, um, the programmatic uh, uh, influences or emphases, if you will, that, um, that can create the most effective learning situation for your students. Um, the six qualities, I'll just summarize them, or I'll just list them briefly, and then we'll go into each one in depth. Um, they should be holistic. Uh, they should be systemic. They should be balanced. They should be proactive, integrated, and reflective. So let's take a look first at the holistic um, uh, quality. Uh, what, what that means is that they need to address the, um, all of the aspects of development for the student. They need to, t they need to um, the, the program needs to address the developmental needs of all of your students in the academic, career, and personal and social domain. 
Now, all three of those domains together, I think, constitute, uh, at least in this country, what is considered um, holistic development. Um, in the academic realm, being able to assist students to be effective learners, to understand their own learning strengths, uh, to understand their learning challenges, and to help them um, design strategies to deal with their challenges and to enhance their strengths. Uh, in terms of career programming, being able to help students understand what direction they're moving with their life and career development, helping them understand if university is for them or if some other post-secondary experience would be more appropriate for them, um, all that helps them to understand the meaning of their current studies uh, as they build a progression towards some ultimate dream. And so an example of those kinds of programs would be career counseling or would be giving students an opportunity to um, refine their career images, their, their dreams for their future, to take their talents, interests, uh, and weave those together in a meaningful way. Uh, finally, in personal and social development, we know that when students feel that they're a part of something significant, when they're a part of a significant social uh, experience, uh, part of their classroom, they have friends, they have caring families, etc., um, that, that this helps students to, to focus on the work at hand, which is their coursework. Um, because primarily, when, when we look at what it is that detracts from learning, much of that happens in that personal and social domain, where there are, are issues in the student's life in terms of friends or family um, or the student's own skill set that keep them from being able to move forward um, in a comfortable and confident way. Um, if uh, more information on this would be available in the, the 40 developmental assets through the Search Institute, you can just look online at www.searchinstitute.com and you can get a sense of what the assets are that help students develop. Many of those are academic, many of those are personal and social. In terms of the next uh, quality of a comprehensive school counseling program. Um, we're looking at uh, that uh, programs that are systemic as being more effective um, in terms of helping students to grow. Um, systemic programs, what this refers to, are programs that address the systems within which students are embedded. Those systems here in the U.S. are uh, comprised of the culture, the community, the family, the school, the classroom, and the peer group. Now, all of those systems together help students to feel grounded, significant, uh, to, to feel as if they matter. Um, there's also a body of research around um, helping students feel as if they matter. Um, and so in terms of a systemic program, what you're looking to create are programs where the student's community and culture are addressed and recognized in, in the comprehensive school counseling program. And so, for example, here in the States, when there are uh, schools that have um, diverse student populations, uh, the most effective programs are those that, that are aware of, that address, that honor, and, um, and recognize the unique cultures within which um, the students live. Um, community issues can arise. For example, uh, a large employer in a community may shut down or may lay off workers. Uh, that means that families, uh, the, the community itself is being impacted and the school, uh, school counseling program then um, could respond for pro in terms of programs for parents or in terms of programs for students uh, to help them understand what's occurring within the community. Uh, in terms of the school and the systemic nature of the school, um, a comprehensive school counselor is aware of the ways that, um, that the school climate and culture influence the experience of students in that school. Now, the, the culture of a school is a system of uh, consists of the rules, um, the unspoken policies, etc., that exist within that school. The climate of a school is that subjective experiencing of the culture. So if, if students feel that they're not valued, if students feel that their input is not important and that administration doesn't care, that teachers don't care, et cetera, then the, the climate is one of, of uh, negativity. 
um, students are not happy, teachers are not happy, but in a, in a comprehensive school counseling program, the school counselor would be monitoring the school climate and would help the administration to understand ways in which decision making, policy making, inclusion and exclusion in a cultural context in that building has a direct impact on the learning of students in the school. And they work with the administration in order to remediate some of those negative elements in the school. Uh, furthermore, uh, in, in terms of the systemic quality of a comprehensive school counseling program, uh, comprehensive school counselors are aware of the family situations within which students are, are, exist. Um, we certainly know that students do not come to the school and leave all of their personal and family issues behind. Now I know that many cultures do not value or do not um, make allowance for sharing of family issues within a school context and obviously that would need to be respected. Um, that being said, I think it's also incumbent on school counselors to be able to reach out to family members, to reach out to parents and caregivers, um, both you know, when there's a concern, but also when there's no concern, simply to invite families to become a part of the school community, to become a part of the conversation about how each student is doing in that school. Finally, in terms of systemic, um, the systemic quality. Uh, I think school counselors need to be aware of what's going on in classrooms and in peer groups. Now within the school setting itself, I think it's very important for school counselors to enter classrooms, to sit in the back of the room, to observe what's going on in the classroom, how the interactions flow, where are students situated, where is the teacher, where are the learning materials, um, and, and to try to help the teacher perhaps design a more um, welcoming, a more inclusive, um, a more um, academically comfortable and personally comfortable in learning environment for each student. Uh, finally, when students are allowed to interact with each other, the school counselor gets to observe how students are working with each other, how they interact with each other, um, and certainly helping them to learn skills to be able to address any interpersonal conflict issues uh, in a respectful and peaceful way. So systemic school counseling programs also have this, this broad view of the student in context and works to help the student in that context to become um, the best, uh, to, to reach all of their potential and to become the best that, that he or she can be. Now, balanced school counseling programs are um, that is the third quality of a comprehensive school counseling program. Um, and uh, balance refers to balancing academic, career, and personal and social development. Uh, but it also refers to being able to balance all of the activities of a, of a comprehensive school counselor, the counseling, educating, going into the classroom and educating students, um, leadership, advocacy, coordination, all of those activities need to be balanced so that no one comprehensive school counselor um, is locked into one type of activity. Um, as a professional, we need to be able to reach out to all students to be able to work with all members of our school community, the teachers, administrators, and parents. And so that kind of balance means that the school counselor steps back uh, from the program and views the, the way that the program functions, the way the school counselor functions in the program in order to ensure balance across all of those domains, across um, academic, career, personal, and social, as well as across all of the activities of a school counselor so that there's not um, such uh, concentration in one activity that the school counselor neglects other activities. Uh, the fourth quality of a comprehensive school counseling program is that it needs to be proactive. <clears throat> proactive school counseling programs are those that, that are, don't wait until problems arise, but rather helps students and helps teachers and helps families to address normal developmental progression before problems arise within that developmental progression. In other words, a proactive comprehensive school counseling program is one that um, understands how important it is to provide information for students about stress, about coping skills, about um, uh, 
problem remediation skills, uh, conflict uh, resolution skills, about appropriate communication, um, about emotional intelligence and emotional reality and how to understand where one's <coughs> emotions come from and what to do with one's emotions. Teaching students proactive problem solving is far more effective than waiting until problems have erupted or, worse yet, waiting until problems have reached a crisis level before they're being addressed. Now, often uh, with a lot of students in a school, I know that it's difficult to be on top of every student's reality, and I'm not saying that every counselor has to be intimately aware of every student's life, but having a proactive view of what it is that students need to be able to do by the time they reach second grade, fourth grade, sixth grade, eighth grade, et cetera, to have a, a mental map of where students need to be developmentally means that the, stu the uh, counselor is able to step in in those areas where uh, issues might arise um, and help students to understand, uh, to develop the skills to, to address those. Um, an example of that, we know that um, many students experience uh, bullying in the fifth, sixth grades, um, and that sometimes bullying is very intense in middle school. And so a, a comprehensive school counselor would design programs and build these programs into their, their comprehensive school counseling program uh, that addresses bullying. But before it becomes bullying, would go into the classrooms and teach students about respectful interactions, about conflict resolution, about inclusion and and um, valuing culture, valuing differences, um, and, and not just tolerating differences, but valuing the unique qualities that, co that their, their classmates would bring um, to the classroom. So in that way, it proactively preempts the need you know, for more intensive bullying prevention strategies per se, because uh, students are learning inclusive strategies and communication strategies long before bullying and some of the interpersonal issues arise um, that sometimes bubbles up within peer groups in, in particular, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grades. So that's an example of what I mean by proactive. Now, the fifth quality of a comprehensive school counseling program is that it needs to be integrated within the academic agenda of the school. Um, far too often, school counseling gets relegated to sort of periphery, to the fringe of a school, um, and, and the, the academic agenda of the school takes center stage. Now, I'm not saying that the academic agenda is not important. Obviously, that's the reason that students are in school. But my point about comprehensive school counseling programs and the need for integration is that the school counselor then needs to be able to communicate with teachers and administrators and parents that the developmental curriculum, which is what the school counselor offers, is as valuable as the academic curriculum. Because the developmental curriculum clears the way for the students to be able to concentrate on the academic curriculum. Now, we understand this because we work in schools. We understand this because we care for students. We want to see students be successful. The challenge sometimes is in, in um, communicating that message to administrators and parents and teachers in a way that, that they can understand. And because the primary agenda of a school is academics, I, I believe that it's most um, successful, that conversation is most successful when the school counselor is able to talk to parents, teachers, and administrators about how much the developmental curriculum facilitates success in the academic curriculum. That's when I've been able to get um, school boards and um, principals and teachers to understand what I have to offer as a professional school counselor. Um, now, I'm not, I've not been successful in every case, but um, I believe I've, I've enjoyed uh, a certain measure of success in those conversations, and I believe that the school counseling programs that I've fostered under, under, that, um, under those efforts have, have benefited as a result. 
Now, the final quality of a comprehensive school counseling program is that they must be reflective. Um, by reflective, I'm referring to two different ways of reflecting on the work that we do. One, we need to be aware of the the um, efficacy of our program itself. We need to be able to capture outcomes to be able to say to administrators, teachers, and parents that the work we're doing has value and has demonstrated benefits for students. When we're able to take that, those outcomes and, and they don't have to be earth-shaking outcomes. They don't have to be, you know, phenomenal earth um, uh, outcomes. But, but I think when we are able to say we're tracking what we're doing, we know that we are successful because there are incremental gains. There are, you know, some kids are going to have phenomenal gains and others it's going to be incremental. Um, the point is that we are tracking what we do, we're tracking the um, efficacy of our programs, and we're willing to share that with administrators, parents, and teachers as appropriate in order to, to demonstrate our commitment to a highest quality uh, comprehensive school counseling program possible. We also need to reflect on our own personal skill sets. Um, we need to be able to understand, you know, where are our growing edges? Where is it that I need to refine my skill set, to um, uh, enhance my skill set? Um, for example, there are a variety of new ways that um, students express their unhappiness. Um, for example, here in the States, uh, there were a number of uh, young women um, who were suffering from eating disorders. Eventually, counselors discovered that young men were also suffering from eating disorders when there was um, deep psychological pain that students were not able to express or process or understand. Um, so everyone became aware of eating disorders and the ideology of eating disorders and how to work with, how to intervene. Slowly but surely, however, students knew that counselors were tracking uh, eating disorders, and so a new way of expressing pain arose uh, in this country called cutting, uh, where students were, were making small cuts um, on their bodies, usually in places that were hidden on the arms or uh, other places of the body that are covered by clothing, um, and, and uh, the um, initial impetus for such behavior were, again, was deep traumatic uh, pain and distress. Uh, now, you know, uh, now counselors have uh, trained themselves to understand, they've read the research about cutting, they've trained themselves to understand what the dynamic is uh, that underlies cutting, how it, how it can be intervened and remediated, and so now um, uh, more and more counselors are aware of the need to address this issue. So that kind of professional development is critical as all of you are moving forward with your discussions, um, building in that reflective piece in a comprehensive school counseling program allows administrators, parents, and teachers to know that you are, you are working on constantly improving, constantly making sure that the services, programs that you offer are the best that they can be. So in summary then, the six qualities of a comprehensive school counseling program must, uh, would include uh, a program that's holistic in terms of academic, career, and personal and social development. Second, a comprehensive school counseling program must be systemic and it must address the culture and community within which the, the school is located, must address the school climate and culture, as well as classroom and family and peer issues that the student um, is dealing with. Uh, the third quality is balance. So the school, a comprehensive school counseling program must be balanced in terms of not only attention to academic, career, and personal and social issues, but also balanced in terms of all of the activities of a comprehensive school counselor, including counseling, educating, 